Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back once again to another Fallout 4 settlement build. Today we're finally going to be in Far Harbor, and our build's actually sitting right above where the Dalton's farm used to be. But as you guys can see this time around, we're going to be taking a look at the bar I recently made. And more specifically, this bar is mainly for mercenaries and bounty hunters only. And if you're wondering why this bar is only for that group of people, it's because I figured a lot of the big-time criminals from the regular commonwealth might actually decide to flee here, knowing that this place is quite a bit more dangerous than the commonwealth, and maybe they would assume that a lot of normal lower-end bounty hunters wouldn't actually try and track them down here. So that's why this building here has become sort of an icon or nice stopping point for any bounty hunters or mercenaries who actually decide to travel all the way to Far Harbor to track those bad guys down. But yeah, overall, I gotta say I'm loving all the new Far Harbor building pieces, and even more so the locations you have to build in. So with all that said, hopefully you guys enjoy what you see today. And without further ado, let's go ahead and take a closer look. Alright guys, so for starters, we're going to be checking out the front of the build. And I'm sure most of you know by now that in Far Harbor it really does not matter if it's daytime or nighttime. It's pretty much going to be dark out no matter what. So although... Setting up the layout and building the main structure was a little bit difficult considering it was my first time using all the new Far Harbor pieces. I think the main challenge was actually setting up all the lighting and getting that done properly. Because at the end of the day I really did not want this to look exactly like all of our other builds from the Commonwealth. I more so wanted it to look as if it really belonged in Far Harbor. So that's why we're seeing a lot more blues and a couple hints of red given off by the open sign and the lettering up at the top and like I mentioned we also have a lot of blue as well which is given off by the big bar sign up at the top which I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep considering it does look maybe a little bit out of place although I'm sure that could be fixed if we maybe add a few dead pixels up there just so it looks a bit more run down but we also have a little bit of blue given off by the fog condensers as well now keep in mind Realistically, these are not the ideal spots for these things. I'm pretty sure you want to have them on the outskirts of your settlement. So they're taking all the fog out there instead of having it right next to all your buildings. But unfortunately, in order to have all our blue light shine right up against our walls, these things pretty much had to be right next to the building. But aside from all of our decorative lighting, there's also a lot of new decorations as well, which we haven't seen before, such as the Vim machine out front. And that is definitely a nice change up from the Nuka Cola machine, which we saw all too much back in the Commonwealth. And there's even a lot of stuff you can throw up on the walls, such as all these buoys. And these really do look nice considering we are so close to the water. And off to the left hand side here, there's also quite a few other boxes and barrels. And even a basket of fish here. And then up on the front porch, since this is a place for mercenaries and bounty hunters, We've got all of our wanted posters hung up here. A few other decorations along the way, and then off to the very back, there's a nice little spot to sit out front, just in case you needed a breath of fresh air. And now moving inside, as you guys can see, this is definitely the most open area of our whole build, and that's sort of a good thing and a bad thing at the same time, since it does mean we have a lot more space to work with, but it also requires us to be able to fill in all the blank and boring areas. And I've tried to do that, especially on each one of the tables. You'll notice these two over here are more so for games and gambling, whereas the ones off to the left are more so for, you know, just dining. And then in order to fill in all the open space on the walls, I did add lots of signs and also more of the buoys and even some of the creature mounts. You'll notice we got a Myrler King there, some Brahmin, and even a Deathclaw on the back wall. And then over in this corner here, like I said, a few signs, there's even some lockers in case, say, a bounty hunter needed to store his weapon inside there, or other valuable items. Speaking of those, you'll notice at our little card game right here, someone must have ran out of caps because they did throw in their uh, gold stopwatch there. But yeah, little details like those are really something you want to try and get down on your builds. And although some people may not notice them from afar, when they really start digging around, the little things like that are really what tend to stand out most. Next up, we'll travel on into the bar portion, which I gotta say is my favorite room in the entire build. Not really because there's anything too crazy going on in here, 
but just because it has a really nice atmosphere and even more so a really dark atmosphere which I think fits well into Far Harbor. By the way if you're trying to achieve this look I'd say use a lot more of these colored lights instead of the bright white ones just because they seem to emit a bit less light and keep it a bit more dark and moody. But anyways back here they've got a counter that's completely loaded with food and drink. This by the way is just a bounty counter. So for instance there's 13 bounties available right now which a mercenary or hunter could come in and claim from either the bartender or even that wall outside that we saw earlier. And lastly in the back corner we do have some magazines for sale and also a weapon or two just in case someone's gun broke down or maybe wasn't enough to capture or kill whoever they were hunting. And then moving over to the opposite side we've got ourselves a game of pool going on right now and the rules are actually on the back wall there. And off to the left is a little design I came up with for a sort of dartboard and these are actually syringes but you know they're close enough considering Fallout 4 doesn't have any sort of dart gun at least not yet. Last but not least we do have the bathroom in the very back and this has lots and lots of supplies in fact it is rather cluttered but I just thought it would be nice to include any sort of supplies or junk you might need to patch yourself up after a good old fight and even a bathtub and you may be wondering why that's in a bar but my thinking behind this was that it showed these guys really are the best of the best and they all respect each other which allows them to you know stay here as long as they need to and even take time out of their day to wash up and have a bath while not having to worry about anyone stealing their equipment. So to sum it all up I just feel like it resembles the trust they have in each other. Oh yeah and correct me if I'm wrong but I believe this should be our very first three-story building we've ever done which is quite cool since it does allow for a lot of extra stuff such as the VIP section up there and we'll get to that in just a second. But for this floor as you guys can see there's a lot of extra storage space and different sorts of barrels and boxes here and there. Even one more booth in the back and then a living room section which is also kind of cool since it looks down at the floor below. But other than that the only thing we have left on this floor is the balcony and then we can go ahead and check out the VIP section. But out here we do have some fish hanging so they can serve those up after they're done drying or maybe they could even go smoke them somewhere. And then right here is where they I guess fillet them or just cut them up to serve in smaller portions and they can even barbecue some of them out here as well. And this guy he's pretty cool. He came all the way from New Vegas to hunt some outlaws and he's even got himself a nice sniper post he likes to hang out at here. And finally we'll move on up to the VIP section which at the moment looks to be empty although usually X688 is standing guard on that rug there. I figured after we blew up the Institute he was out of a job and well he was so good at killing before that he just became a gun for hire. And also McCready he usually just does push-ups right there. But yeah this here is the VIP section. It's got a few decorations here and there. A lot of comfortable seatings and even some shot glasses so they can just sit back and relax for once in their life. And I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why the hell the Silver Shroud is there. But I was thinking even though he's sort of a superhero, maybe a lot of the mercenaries and bounty hunters here idolize him and picture him as the best bounty hunter ever. But yeah we've got his statue there and then there's also a decent amount of memorabilia there on the table. But anyways guys that is just about everything for today's build. This was by far my favorite we've ever done. I really did have a fun time throughout the whole building process even though it did take a super long time. All in all though I am hoping you guys found the bounty hunter spin-off we did on this bar to be pretty interesting in the end. I just feel like so many normal bars have already been done so that's why I tried to give this a new fresh and creative touch. But anyways guys thanks again for watching I really do appreciate all the support. Be sure to let me know any suggestions for future builds and as always I will see you in the next one.